That's fine. If I fell in love with you, would you promise to be true and help me understand? Cause I've been in love before and I found that love was more than just holding hands. If I can.
62. I strolled into a farmyard where no one was about, treading past the troubles I raised my head to shout. Something like that. Pull out the cow's glasses, I called and rolled my eye. It ambled up toward me, I melted with a sigh. Mm. You're just in time, the cow said, his eyes were all ablaze. I'm feeling like an elephant, I aren't been milked for days. Why is this, I asked it, tugging at its throttles. I don't know why, perhaps it's cause my milk comes out in bottles. That's, That's handy for the government, I thought, and in a tick. The, the cow fell down all sudden, I'd smash it with a brick. I have a little budgie, he is my very pal. I take him walks in Britain, I hope I always shall. I call my budgie Jeffrey, my granddad's name's the same. I call him after granddad, who have a feathered brain. And same kind of rubbish. Yeah, same kind of rubbish, that's what I call. Two of them? Very popular. I like um, the first one. This one's called I Sat Be Lonely, right. I sat be lonely down a tree, humbled, fat and small. A little lady seemed to me I couldn't see at all. I'm looking up and at the sky to find such wondrous voice. Puzzle, puzzle, wonder why I hear, but I've no choice. Speak up, come forth, you ravel me, I potty menthol shout. I know you're hiddy by this tree, but still she won't come out. Such softly singing lulled me sleep an hour or two or so. I wake me slow and took a peep and still no lady show. Then suddy on a little twig I thought I see a sight. A tiny little tiny pig that sing with all its might. I thought you were a lady, I giggle, well I may. To my surprise the lady got up and flew away. The end.
chop a burger and read a rocket. Pull it over, roll over, face over, big face, little blue. Yeah. 
should be all right. But I don't care too much for money. Money can buy me love. I'll give you all I've got to give. You say you love me too. I may not have a lot to give. What I got, I'll give to you. Money just can buy. I don't care too much for money. Money can buy me love. <laughs> You never told me you'd come to stop. I got you all stuff. Oh, I'm from Melbourne, sir. Or start your own label, and if so, where is it going to be? We'd never start our own label. It's too much trouble, you, you know. You invest heavily in some of the company that then has the Beatles, or...? I don't know. It's all that'll be all up to Mr. Epstein. How yeah. long before your contract does terminate with Capital? I don't know. I don't even remember signing it. A year. It lasts another year. Oh, yeah. How do we decide that? We're not writing one, are we? Are we? Yeah, you're writing one. You've heard him telling you about one. I didn't know we were writing one. I was writing one. Did he? We thought of it. We haven't done anything about it, you know. Somebody said, what do you want to do next? And that sounded like quite a good thing to do. We haven't done anything about it. I think whoever knows most of the words by the time we get to it. <laughs> Is that a laser you've got there? <laughs> Maybe, we don't know yet. It's up to Brian, you know. Nothing definite. Same as now. Hi, Jeff. I'd like to ask you all a personal question about your hair. We had a little long too, and how can you sleep at night with that large? Well, you well when you sleep, you don't notice. <laughs> True. Oh, that told. How do you sleep with your arms and your legs still attached? Just the same. We got you for years, you know. 
Maybe that's why we've been up every night for the last few years. Yeah, years. maybe that's, that's why we have parties. That's it. We that's can't. It. We can't sleep with this long hair. Great. People have only had short hair since the World War, so that's they've been possible. sleeping for all those thousands of years with long hair. It's not a problem, I tell you. It's just as much a problem as having short hair, which to you seems it's like It's more of a problem having short hair, having to keep it short. It's not worth coming over for one or two performances. We may as well go to as many places as we can when we come. You're expected to be annually as an adjunct? Yeah. I think so. We don't really know. It's our manager. Zibby. Shazam! Also, your stage costumes that you use, or apparel that you wear, uh, this is kind of an trend. I mean, I ask you, uh, who does your tailoring for you? A man called Douglas Millings. Millings he makes of London. Them to what we order, you know, we tell him how to do it and he makes them. Yes? Oh, I got my start playing the drums from you. After I listened to you, I started playing them. Oh, you'll never get anywhere if you listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on. Yeah, I was wondering how long have you been playing the drums? Uh, 30 years, isn't it? Yeah, about, about seven years now. How old are you? I'm 14. Oh, well, oh, you're okay. Same age as us. Great. By the time he learned about the machine, do you? Pardon? Do you have plans of getting married? Uh, no, not particularly. I don't have a question, but I... What did he say? What did he say? Oh, fine, thanks, fine. Am I on? Hey, what's fine. the name of your stage? <laughs> What's the name of your station? I didn't quite catch that. <laughs> <laughs> oh George, Hi, really. yeah. I'll tell you that if you ever come to Ohio, you can stay at my house. Oh, thank you. <laughs> your parents are working. Yes, yes, it's fab. That's marvellous. Well, that's fine. That's fine. It's fab, but it's great. You got one for me? I wish we had one for everybody. It's great. I got that. That's great. Which Any of them. Were you people disappointed with the crowd reception you got in Seattle compared to the other cities? No. No. Very nice. Pleasant surprise. How do you enjoy being mobbed? Good as long as you've got the police. <laughs> <laughs> We've never actually been uh, mobbed, you know. Got. No one's yeah. ever asked you. New Zealand. Well. Wow. Consider it might hurt your future concerts. Don't worry, it's been going on all years. Yeah, well, a couple of years. years you know. Know. How many more years do you think it will go on? Don't know. Uh, I'll say we're not there. Have you any idea? Three, four, what, what do you think? Till death do us part. Do you ever get tired of all of this? The thing is, when when you sort of see us, we're on tours, but we're not always on tours, and we... No, we're not, George. <laughs> <laughs> well, how are you feeling? Fine, thank you. Everything all right. Everything's all right. I read you were dangerously ill. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't had any more throat trouble. No, not yet. Very precious to our married people, are you? No. Any plans? He's the only one. No plans. 
Oh, yeah. How did your wife like all these girls making all this fuss over you? She loves them. Serena, why do you get the most fan mail? Do I? You do in Seattle. Oh, I'm very nice. Thanks a lot, uh, Seattle. <laughs> I don't know, you know, Castro's more people write to me. John, John, somebody said uh, you borrowed your bathtub scene from Cleopatra, is that true? I haven't seen Cleopatra. She is milk. Yes, she is milk. Mm. Uh, well, what are your plans once your notoriety as a feudal diminishes? What are your aims in life? We've never made any plans as a group, you know, not, none of us are bothered planning what's going to happen. So we won't uh, cater out. We won't do that, no, you know, we'll just wait and see what happens. What would and you like to do after you're finished? Then I'll probably John and I will carry on songwriting. I'm not doing it with you. Honestly, no. Oh, the Beatles breaking up. I don't know, you know. Ringo, what do you plan to do? I don't know, I haven't thought of it. How far ahead are you folks, gentlemen? Uh, a few months, I think. Oh, next year. Another American swing? Pardon? You've got another American swing in mind? Or swing? Well, we, we don't do it. We have nothing to do with it, really. We just say, swing. Oh, are we? I'm not sure, you know, we're a bit vague on dates. After, uh, who has the most closely patterned in music? Is there one particular artist or type of music that you call more closely than another? Who out of the previous groups would you say that you most uh, like? You mean out of the new group? No, out of the old group. The, the, old group. the groups that you listened to prior to your time to get inside of yourself, the records that you listened to. Right Elvis Presley's a good group. <laughs> Did you ever meet him? No. no. I understand you uh, took a little junket on your way up. Did you go to Boulder? Is that where you went? Did you take a look at Boulder Dam? Oh, yeah. That's what it was. He was flying around for that. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. He went right around yeah. it. Boulder Dam. Right. Yeah, I've heard about that. Yeah, I've heard about School. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> of all your imitators, which one do you give, uh, say, have the most respect for, or uh, give the biggest chance of making it? Well, all of, none of the imitators, or the really imitators, you know, done anything at all. The people that have made it, a group, are sort of original, you know, so that we don't really... You don't really the major tools, it. though, they're imitating, you know, but they're quite different, really. They're just, you know, people who just got longer in England now. Just, they're not imitating us, they had long hair before us, you know. <laughs> Especially in prehistoric well, days. Who would be the, uh, the most deceptive of the biggest American star in Great Britain now? I think you Elvis. 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 John, have you written a poem uh, after you got back to the United States? Did you write anything that describes it? No, I never write anything like that. Oh, no, I never do either. I wish you would. <laughs> Ringo, is there a story behind the rings on your finger? Any background to pick them up in a different town? Once upon a time. You know, that's not my mother, that's not my grandfather. I'm not married. It's a wedding, Ringo. I'm not married. And these are just two different girls. And I've had these for for three years now. You don't change rings. No. I've got a few more than I ever were. Did you tell us how much you... No. A lot. We don't. <laughs> hey, maybe, maybe. Uh, can we let one of the kids ask a question? Maybe? Yeah, 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 sure. Do I want to play them? Uh, I don't think so. Do you like Donald Duck? No. Why? <laughs> I can't understand him, you know. Dr. Willis? I can't either. George, what's the one? Do you think England has over America and America over England? What? Card quality. Card quality. Um. I don't really know. It depends on the individual. I mean, I might like something about England that you may detest. So I think, you know, the qualities depend on each individual. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, we, we might have had, we probably would have had success through our music anyway if people were going to like it, but the higher health, well, it, it just turned out to be a gimmick. We didn't plan it to be a gimmick. It just happened to be one, and it was a great help. But still people bought our records before they saw us or any photographs of us.
Yes, I've got Ringo's. I have Ringo's autograph, and it's mounted on the wall in my toilet. <laughs> we like them, and you know we love what they do. The thing is, all these people say, you know, they shout and scream, and it's bad, but it's not. You know, we like them shouting and screaming as long as they're having a good time. Inspector, would you relate some of your unhappy experiences this past weekend with the Beetle Group? Well, Phil, number one, of course, we were very happy in that upon the arrival of the troop, we were rather concerned with security at the uh, Lemington Motor Inn, but we accomplished getting them into the motel and uh, up to their floor with no incidents arising. We had no trouble with three of the Beatles because they had upon returning from the show at Met Stadium, had gone to the hotel, had had a lunch, and had gone right to bed. We did have trouble, however, with uh, the report of a girl in one of their rooms, that of Paul McCartney. We did, however, get the manager of the Beatle Troop to announce himself uh, <clears throat> at Mr. McCartney's room and tell him that the girl would have to leave the room or we would have to force entry into the room. We felt, Phil, very frankly, that this is a typical traveling troop, much like you have with the circus, and that they are here today and they are gone tomorrow. We are accountable, of course, to all the citizens of Minneapolis, and we feel for the welfare and safety of their kids, even though they may be a little hysterical and they may go a little overboard for this type of thing. We know where our responsibility lies. We did remove several girls from the hotel. We removed a couple of them from a room that had been reserved for a dining room, and they were in bed in this room. As I understand, you feel that these kids did not have any idea of proper behavior. The Beatles? I don't believe so, or I don't think they would tolerate this thing going on within the troop. Again, I say, however, the three of them were in bed, and I don't believe they can be responsible for the improper behavior of members of their troop. They moved in and out of the motel. They seemed to mingle with quite a number of young girls who were on the sidewalk. These were, for the most part, primarily Minneapolis girls. At midnight, we called the curfew. We told the kids that uh, they were in violation of it, those under 18 years of age, and they would have to move on. It came to our attention at that time from a couple of the girls on the sidewalk that they had friends who they were waiting for that were within the motel. We then felt, of course, that the only place they would be is on the fifth floor of the motel where the Beatles were housed. We went to the fifth floor, and uh, we completely shook down the fifth floor, doing this with the aid of pass keys, knocking on doors, and uh, telling people that uh, the curfew was now enforced and that they would have to have guests leave the hotel. What was their reaction to this enforcement? Some of the members of the troop, Phil, became very indignant. They told us that Minneapolis was a very narrow-minded town, as were its police officials, and that other cities had been very tolerant uh, to the parties that they had held in their rooms. Are you a Beatle fan? No, sir. I hear the music around my house, but I'm not a Beatle fan. As far as Beatle music, I could care about it not one bit myself personally. However, this does not mean that uh, it is not popular music. As far as the Beatles' entourage or the group of hangers-on and uh, people who make their living off them are concerned, those that were around the hotel I have no use for, nor do I care if they ever return to Minneapolis, which they have threatened not to do. So would you elaborate on this? Who threatened not to come to Minneapolis again? One of their uh, group with a British accent uh, told me that they would never come back to Minneapolis, and I remarked to him that if they did not come, it would be too soon for me. As far as Paul McCartney is concerned, did you have any personal problem with him? No, sir, we did not. Uh, I did not speak to Mr. McCartney. I felt that uh, he had a business manager here, and I felt it was his place to uh, keep his uh, product in tow. Do you expect any calls as a result of this? Yes, sir, I do expect quite a few calls, Phil. Uh, it just seems that uh, every time that we do take an enforcement action, we do get some calls. Hello, everybody. There's a Beatle on Murray the K Swinging Swari Show. Hey, Beatle! 
baby, and it's Burn a Cave of the Beatles, and we're talking to you from London, England, where it's all happening over here. What you're about to hear happened in Miami. Ringo and I sitting on the beach, facing the water, and uh, in a private section of a pool. And as we're making this conversation, there are about a thousand people all gathered around and roped off by uh, police watching us speak. Hey, Ring, could I wanted to ask, you know, you have become like the, uh, the favorite of the American crowd here. Is there any reason you think for it? Is there one thing that you think they shout to you or tell to you that has made you, everybody wants to know, which one's Ringo? Which one's Ringo? Uh, I don't know. I can't understand it, you know. So I just don't don't get it. You know, I can't see why they're shouting for me. Do you think it is the difference of the name, the fact that you... It may be, because um, a lot of people remember Ringo, you know, because the name stands out. I, I just don't know. Well, everybody asks, which one's Ringo? Well, 15, min uh, 15 months ago, just to get the story straight, and a story that hasn't been told, and we've been kidding around and uh, uh, with what's happening and all that, but I'd, I'd like them to get to know what really happened, what really touched off the spark, and how you uh, fitted into the picture. What were you doing, let's say, uh, a year and a half, two years ago? Um, well, I've been playing with groups now since about 1960, you know, just playing getting money, you know, working, and um, I met the Beatles in Germany when I was there with another group, and we used to have to work 12 hours between the two groups, you know, and we got to know each other pretty well, and um, I came, we came, all came back to England, and um, their drummer was sick, so they asked me would I sit in, you know, just for a day or so, till he got better, and I said yeah, and then um, I did that, and then I went with another group again, you know, and they got him back, and then... He was sick again, and they came and asked me, you know. So every time he was sick, they just used to come and ask me to sit in, which I used to love it, you know, because they were a much better group than the one I was with. And then we had this job at a holiday camp in England where, you know, you, you play for three months, which is supposed to be the season, but there's never very much sun. And um, Brian Epstein phoned me up and said, um, would you like to join the Beatles, you know. He said, well, he phoned me up on a Tuesday and said, would you join... The Beatles, I said, yeah, he said, well, can you get home tonight? And I said, oh, I can't leave the other group just like that, you know. Must give a bit of notice. So I said, I'll be there Saturday. And then um, I arrived Saturday. We had about two hours rehearsal, and then we played that night, and we've been playing ever since. This was in August 1962. This took place in New York when uh, George was doing my show as a DJ from his... Uh bed he was suffering a cold and he was in bed in his hotel room and we were he was doing taking over my show via the beeper phone well george so far you're doing very well as a disc jockey thanks and you got some pretty good sounds there you got some things lined up pretty Listen, good Rudy, you got your Beatles sweatshirt yeah i got my Beatles sweatshirt uh, did you see it yeah well get rid of that cuckoo one the add-on last night you mean the you submarine saw... race watchers that's it yeah, well, I, I mean, you want me to wear the Beatle one? Yeah. Will you wear the submarine race watches and I'll wear the Beatles? Yeah, I've got mine on now. You got your submarine race watches? Yeah. Sir? All right, well, that's good. You keep your submarine race watches, uh, and that goes very good with your sweat socks, too. Yeah, you wear they're them... all sweaty. <laughs> yeah, I got news for you. What? you got to wear them with rat fink sweat uh, socks. You see, you wear your submarine race watching shirt with rat fink sweat socks, and we'll wear our rat fink sweat socks with the Beatle sweatshirt. Yeah. Okay, we're cool now. Okay. How do, how do they conduct shows in England? I mean, what kind of disc jockeys do you have over there? Oh, well, uh, they're great, but, the, you know, it's it's sort of not as casual as the, in the States here. It's sort of more... And they wear ties, you see. <laughs> they wear ties. That's a drag, and man. They, yeah, and you don't get any BBC disc jockeys with ski pants <laughs> and funny hats. Yeah, well, of course, well, I, I, that's true, I, but do you think I could go, I'd do uh, any good over there in England yeah, if I came over with my ski pants and my funny hat? Yeah, you'd go great. Yeah? Mind I, you, we got a mad fellow over there called Jimmy Savile. Jimmy Savile? Yeah, and he carries a big bag of tricks around with him, and he's got bleach blonde hair. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. I don't know if I'd bleach my hair blonde, baby, but I'd, I'd carry around a bag of tricks. I don't Travels mind that. Travels around on a chariot. On a chariot? Yeah. Oh, that's snappy. Yeah. That's sporty, baby. Here we here we go around with a jag. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, 
Uh, I tell you, you fellas have got to learn something before you leave the States. If you really want to, you know, go over with the girls, and you don't ask, you know, if a girl, pretty girl walks by, you don't have to start a normal conversation. What you usually say when you, when you see a pretty girl is... You think you can learn that, George? Well, I, think, I think the girl would have gone by the time you finished saying that. No, baby, that's, the, that's why she knows what's, that's what's happening. See, here in New York... That's the uh, that's the call of the submarine race watcher. That means that you're a happening. The famous truth after the Walter Winchell story that Paul had been married, Paul and Murray the K on the telephone from England. Hiya, Paul. How are you? Okay, thanks, baby. Everything happening, baby? Well, yes, yeah, it is. Well, listen. First of all, I want to tell you it's good speaking to you. I spoke to George earlier today, and of course, everybody here in the country is going absolutely ape. The girls have been screaming I, at the uh, closed-circuit telecast yesterday. All I heard them when I walked out on stage is one question, and I, they won't be satisfied till I hear it from you. Are you married? Me? Yes. No. Uh, I don't know how this story's got around, Murray, but, I mean, you know, newspaper men have been asking me for sort of months here. Completely untrue. Right. But, you know, it's completely, it, it, it's, it's a lie, in fact. And none of that uh, jazz about you being married or engagement or anything nothing, like that? Nothing. I've got a girlfriend, that's all. you got a girlfriend. That's all. That's fine. I asked Paul what kind of girls the Beatles like best. I think mainly most of us like girls with longish hair. You know, that, that seems to be something we, we've always liked anyway. We like quietish girls, but... And, uh, reasonably intelligent ones, you know. I, I can't stand girls who are sort of very stupid, you know, and 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 do stupid things. It's that's just our taste, you know. We like girls to be a, have a bit of intelligence, uh, you know, not not clever, clever, but just a you know, a bit sensible. And uh, actually, most of the people that write to us, I like that anyway. I wish we could get to meet them all. Marvelous, yeah. You know, that's generally what we like in girls, and good looks, of course. In Miami. Paul, well, I want to say goodbye to you. That's why I had you come over. Where are you going, Murray? I'm going back to New York. You're not really, are you? Yeah, I really am. Unless oh, you want to call... the sun's blazing down. Yeah, but do you, you, want, to, you want to call up my station and say, man, now uh, we've done exclusives for wins. How about doing an exclusive I've, I've for you? I've forgotten what station it was, Murray. What, was your, what station was yours? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> How come you put me on when you put me on like I'm you put me on? I'm not putting me on when I put you on. Yeah. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah. We would like to thank, you know, your station for really... Doing things for us. We really appreciate it. It's been marvelous. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing you over in London. I think Brian may bring me over with a little gig over there. It's great. I hope he does, you know. And I'm looking forward. I'm really going to miss you. Oh, well, Murray, babe. We're going to miss you, too. We were next door neighbors for a few days. But... Yeah, yeah. We'll see you when you get to England, though, you know. Should have a good time. Excuse me, I'm out of breath. I've just been having a little swim. Are you having a ball? Yeah, great time. Did you enjoy the uh, boat ride? Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Okay, yeah. babe. Yeah. Paul McCartney of the Beatles. Goodbye, See you, buddy. See you. <laughs> John. Tell me, baby. Tell me. Hey, Ring. What's, What's that? happening, baby? Everything's happening. It's all happening. How are you doing? All right. It's cold, isn't it? Yeah, a little cold here. What, you, this, the last thing you said to me in Miami is just come here, we want to show you the people and the yeah. buildings. Well, there's a lot of people but, there. But a lot no of grass. Sun. <laughs> <laughs> Never any sun over here. Hey, it was a wild uh, spot you took me to last night. Yeah. The ad oh, Don't talk to me. I'd still <laughs> It was a wild night. Did you, did you give George his album? Yeah, I'll give him the honey. Thank you very much. All right. Go back. Here okay. We here we go. Back again. That's that's, that's film business, you it's know. That's John Merriman, you know. Yes, I met the John. Good friend of ours. All right, John. <laughs> Hi, Paul. So how are you doing this radio right? look? <laughs> <laughs> that's right, that's right. How are you doing, still? anyway? I'm doing good. Did you like the picture last night? Yeah, great. Oh, oh very good. I've seen it before, though. Well, how come you went to see it again? Nothing well, you know... Well, it was a good picture, wasn't it? Yeah. I saw Ringo later after the thing, and yeah. I, I, I tell you the truth, it's a shame that, uh, really, that you fellas can't go anyplace. 
you know, there's just one club you go to all the time because you know that that's the only place that you're not going to get bothered. Mm-hmm. It's a shame. Yeah, well, there's one or two others, but this is the current craze, you see, this one. Oh, that's what's happening? Yeah. <coughs> Do you, um... Excuse me, <coughs> In the United States, you got to find it. you got to find it. we got to find some spots for you to come back to New York so you can go with... Won't have the same scene that happened over yeah. there. Because I was speaking... How about the Empire States? The so top of it is it's a big yeah, it's club. a big club, baby. It's a tower. It's the tower, <laughs> big, tower of strength is right up there. You know, I'll tell you one thing. When you go out to uh, uh, the states this time, I think that it'd be smart to find a couple of spots. Jackie said she's got to find a couple of spots for you guys to go that you can really enjoy without, uh, like we did with the yacht. You know, yeah. some place you can go off by yourself and really enjoy. Yeah, well, that's the spirit. That's the spirit, indeed. Ringo Starr, what's happening, baby? Everything's happening, baby. How is everyone over there? Everybody is good, Ringo. Everyone is just great. I'm so delighted to hear from you. How is Australia? Oh, it was good, you know. Everybody was was worried about you, you know, with the, that tonsillitis thing, but George got on and said that you were feeling okay. You yeah. could... Oh, I'd like to thank everyone in the States for sending me telegrams and that, you know, saying get well soon. Thank you, everybody. Okay, baby. Ringo finally did it. And he tells you why, where, and how. Ringo, what do you have to yes. say to all the uh, teenage girls who broke into tears yesterday when they heard the news? Uh, I don't think there was that many, actually, you know. You know, everything seems to go fine. There's only sort of, you know, only a few that are going off the edge. Well, where did you propose? Ringo? In the Ad Lib Club. Is <laughs> 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 in the early hours of the morning, Ringo? No, well, yeah, it's about two o'clock in the morning. You weren't on bended knee? No, I didn't. Sorry about that. What part of the honeymoon location we got? I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to find a fella. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone know? No? Liars. <laughs> Is there any place in the world you feel you and Maureen could go when you want to be alone with her and walk outside freely? And where would that be? I have no idea. Only Vietnam. <laughs> 